we have some things to share that I think can be helpful for your life and also helpful for you to get involved here, finding ways to grow spiritually and to serve. And so right now I'm just looking around and I'm saying, you know, we got a lot of empty seats and that's good. We're still in vacation. Many people are on vacation, they're traveling. And I was still getting some email, email, not emails, but like WhatsApp messages on my text on my phone this morning. It's like, I'm out of town. I'm not going to make it. And that's okay. You don't have to check in with me if you're going to be here or not. We're still going to be up here and doing this. And I really love the church, not just Christ church, but the church like people of faith getting together to sing, to pray, to study the Bible. And there's all different kinds of personalities and ways and styles. And, you know, there's a lot of differences of opinion, too, about different things. But I love this particular community. I mean, I look out, and literally, some of you I don't even know. And I can't remember everybody's name. And some of you tell me, yeah, John, you asked me two or three times. Keep asking. And that's just kind of my personality. But I often, I know so many stories. And now that I have been here, literally, as I said in the email, if you got it, if you didn't get it, sign up for it. Since this is literally 16 years, right? 2003. About this same Sunday, 2003, was the first time I was ever in Christ Church. And this podium, it's called a podium, was up here. And I was asked to lead the service and sing the doxology and say the Lord's Prayer and remember when to light the candles. And I I, I wasn't used to that. I didn't even know. I was trying to remember. I, I was reading the Lord's Prayer. I couldn't remember exactly how it went. And these different elements, and we were singing hymns, and there was a, an organ here, a large wooden organ, and sometimes the electricity went out. And Betty was playing the organ, doing a magnificent job. And she'd been doing that for years. And it it was just a different place. And across the years now, 16 years, literally, if the people didn't keep moving on, we wouldn't fit here in five services. Like hundreds of people have come through here and moved on. So when I think of Christ Church, I think of all these people that many of them, some of them don't stay in touch or I don't stay in touch and they're gone and many of them do stay in touch. And people literally all over the world that even read the letter and say, oh wow, you know, I wish we were there, we just remember. And I look around and all the different things. When somebody came and they said, you know, why don't you put up a screen? And then we had a big debate if the screen was too big or too ugly or the wrong spot or where we should put it. And somebody donated for the screen and the projector. All the, before we had, when we didn't even have curtains, But there were so many things, but all the people leaving their mark, leaving, and not just the people I knew, because people like Betty and Betty and Heather that even years before had provided so we could have these chairs. You know that the chairs that you're sitting in are like 100 years old, literally. And they came over from England in a big shipment, and there's several different places around town that have basically these same chairs, same furniture, because they brought it over. And it's great. And sometimes we think we'll change the chairs so we can change the acoustics. And they have, they have a few problems. I'm sorry if you're sitting in a bad one. But they're just, they're great. They've got the right angle. The right, and people put this place together in a way that it would last for the next generations. And so we're here enjoying many things that other people did for us, thinking of us looking ahead. And so part of planning and being part of a community is not just taking advantage of what's good for me right now, but what is going to be here when I'm gone? What can I leave? And wherever you are in your home, in a friendship, in a place, wherever you go, if you go to eat uh, uh, at Subway, just leave the table better than you found it. You know, you walk in and somebody just left you a mess, just throw the trash out. So when you leave a place, whenever you leave, wherever you go, it's always better because you went there. And not just the place, but how about the people? What if all the people you come into contact with went away a little bit better 
because they came into contact with you. And they're just a little happier. I mean, who could not be happy with the story Alex told today? Great story, Alex. And it's not a story. I mean, it's a reality that you're living in all the hardship and all the things. But in this moment, it's a great thing. So thanks for sharing that joy so we can be a part of that. Well, in 2016, we had a Bible verse. And this was part of our year verse. We said 1 Peter 4, 8 to 10. But I want to recapture verse 10 for our year verse our year verse. And we talk here a lot about having a year verse. It's not an obligation. You're not a better person if you have one or worse if you don't. It's just a great idea. And the year verse means you read your Bible and you look for a verse and you say, you know what? You pray about it. You think about it. You say, you know, this is a great verse. I think I'm going to keep this for like uh, one I'm going to refer to throughout the year. And maybe it's going to help me. Maybe it's going to guide me. You know how I picked my year verse for this year? My personal. This is the church, so you can be looking at it. But when the family got together, every few years or so, we watched The Lord of the Rings. So if you don't like The Lord of the Rings, I'm sorry for you. But the books are like the best books, fiction books ever written in English. And so the books are even better than the movies, but the movies are pretty good. And so we had the extended version and we watched like 15 hours of the Lord of the Rings. And I love it. And the whole Tolkien thing, and the, he's the author, all the different stuff. But over and over again, you find in the story people having to act courageously. And they're outnumbered, or tough times come. And there are several times, and one of the key things in the whole book is, is when they have, to, they have to ride down to the gates to meet the enemy. And so, uh, not Christmas, yeah, it was Christmas, was it Christmas Eve when we had the, the quiet time in here and the reflection? And I was reading the book of Isaiah. And I got to Isaiah chapter 28, verse 6. And I was sitting here just reading and all these different things. And Isaiah 28, 6 says, He, God, will be a spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment, and I thought, in leadership, a source of strength to those who turn back the battle at the gates. And all I could think of was, you know, the Lord of the Rings and those guys when the evil came in, who goes down to the gate? And the reality is, since I was thinking and meditating and praying, I thought, Sometimes when you have your low point in life, who are you going to call? I don't know who you talk to. You should talk to somebody. But when the hard times come, who do you talk to? And in my world, lots of people talk to me. Like this weekend, I talked to four people in different parts of the world who I know their families, their situations, their things, who are dealing with the fact that they were sexually abused when they were younger by people who should, you know, they should have been able to trust. And the decades have gone by, and they're still dealing with that. And for some unfortunate reason for me, four different people contacted me about that this weekend. So, to me, there's a spiritual dynamic of saying, these are people who are fighting for their life, literally. And do I have the courage to go down and meet the enemy, as it were, at the gates? Talk to people? And for some of us, that might be an extreme thing. When somebody calls and they say, you know, 10 days ago I lost my job. Will you pray for me? But is there anything else you can do? Three weeks ago or a month ago we were talking with Alex and he's like, man, it's been over a year and I don't know what's going to happen. If this has a solution, will my parents, my parents, my family is going to be able to come or not? You never really know what somebody else's story is. And you don't need to know. We don't need to know all the details about people's lives. 
But we need to know what our story is, and that's when we get to perspective. See that couple right there? Isn't that an awesome view? You can be in that same picture. You can take that picture. You can identify it, right? That's the, that's the stadium right here in Montevideo. You go into the museum. If you've never gone, it's actually pretty cool. Go into the museum down under it. Then you pay, you know, 10 pesos or 100 pesos or whatever it is, and you can go up the tower. And you, you put you on an elevator up to the top, and you can see the city like you never have seen it before. Has anybody done that? I did not know that existed. You've been up there? So go up there, take your picture. You, I mean, that's an iPhone, so it's just easy. Perspective. You see the city like you've never seen it before. But the questions in life that we need to ask, who am I? Who am I and where am I? Who am I and where am I? Because when you know who you are, you're that much able to help somebody else. Do you know that the best way to help somebody who's in a crisis is to be able to make sense of your own story? Your own story. If you can make some sense out of your own story, then you can begin to help somebody else. You don't have to be a counselor. You don't have to be a psychologist. You don't have to be a doctor or a pastor. But you can make some sense out of your own story. And so that's who am I? Where am I? So anyway, that was my year verse. So we had a year verse for the church. And it was up there. Just go backwards one. And then each of you, said Peter, talking to his people, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Now, Peter, the apostle Peter, was talking about the idea that every good thing we have comes from God. So that's sort of the background of this. You're a faithful steward of God's grace, the things that God has given you. The good things, the ability to smile, to cheer somebody up, to have a skill or a talent, to play the piano or the guitar, whatever it is, whatever talent you have, you can use it to help somebody. And he says, you know, let's, let's recognize that and say, I have something that can help somebody else. Okay, Chris, scoot, scoot forward. The, so, the ori so perspective, if that was one thing, orientation would be the other. Where am I going? Where am I going? So who am I, where am I, and where am I going? Oh, yeah, so got to get on the bus, get going in the right direction. So there's arrows pointing the different ways. There are a lot of different options out there. So I wanted to say about self-perspective, it's your self-awareness you have to find. You need to find your own voice. These people that are struggling decades later, that's one of the first things I said. This happened to you. You need to tell your story. That's your story. Tell it. Don't be silent. Ask for help. In all of our lives, we need to ask for help. If we don't ask for help, we're like children. A sign of emotional maturity is the capacity to ask for what you need. All the time say, no, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm great. And inside we're thinking, man, I don't know what, how am I going to do this? And there are people that can make it easy that can help us because they have different gifts, different abilities, different talents. So in the orientation, get some options, but keep your perspective. Okay, just real quickly, I want to mention that at the assembly last year, we talked about some pastoral priorities. And so these came out in Spanish and English, but develop a vision. These are some things we said, this is what we're working towards with our team. We want to develop a vision. And we want to train people, get people involved through alpha and emotionally healthy spirituality and community Bible study, what we're doing Wednesday night in godly play. They had a great godly play training event yesterday. And so godly play is what they're doing with the children down below. Do you know? See, you don't know somebody's story. Think of the godly play training, and you could have come yesterday, but it was a busy day, and it's and you've already seen it or done that, do you know that right now three Catholic churches in Colombia are inviting Lisa to come and teach them godly play? I keep telling you, man, this is one of the great treasures we have here, and you need to go down there and check it out, learn what they're doing. Don't just count on one time. 
be a part of it. It's an amazing program. And uh, so then the next one. I said, I would love to have more volunteers helping us on Sunday mornings in small groups. We have so many volunteers and people doing things. And maybe if you're here and you think, well, what? I can't imagine what else there is to do. There's so many different things to do. And part of it is just being an encouragement to others or being at the door and saying, hey, I'm glad you're here. Do you remember people's names? If you could try every week to learn one more name or even every month, and once you move past the name and the cultural differences, what if you could find out somebody's story? There are stories that people have to tell in this room right now that if you heard them, you would never forget it the rest of your life. I know a lot of the stories here. They're not my stories to tell. But there are people sitting here that if you ask them and you listen to their story, you would never be the same. You'd be, I, I, I just can't believe that. It's so different. So, and your story may be one of those. So if that's you, tell people we need to know. But we need to get something going for the young people. For the, and so the Saturday night, that I was pointing at Cynthia, but she's gone. It's out here somewhere. But the young people, like the older young people, but we used to have a youth group. There were times in the history of this church where there would be like 25 middle schoolers. When my son was in middle school, and we had some, my niece came down, and then Daniela Chavez, some of you remember that? Do you remember? And there would be like the whole section, 25 kids that are like 13, 14 years old. Can you imagine that? Coming to church on Sunday morning. And so, you know, we've gone through different stages, but we need that. We need the young people. And so... creating more opportunities to participate. And so we're doing that. We're working on it. And I just wanted to show you quickly. Go ahead, Chris, to the next one. We've got a great, if you're new here, you're not so familiar. People sometimes ask me. I never take any time in a Sunday morning to explain this. And I'm not going to really explain it to you now. But this is, this is a community. We have members. We have statutes. We have a consejo, a, a, a council. And those are the people that are right now elected, and they get reelected every year and for up to three years. So it's a great team of people. We have a group that looks at the finances. We have an outside accountant. So it's like a, a real organization, and you have some skills that could help somebody in all of these different areas or in some other areas. Go ahead, Chris. <clears throat> so we said at the – we had just finished studying – Nehemiah, and we said at the assembly that we had in December, the God of heaven is who helps us to move forward. It's the God of heaven. That's what Alex was saying. God is the one that takes us forward. And so think about that year verse. First Peter 4.10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. Now, your place of service may not be here. So let your mind be free of like John saying, you know, he wants me to sign up here and I don't have any more time. I can't come more often. I don't even come very much. I want you to apply it to your life wherever you are. If you're here or you're somewhere else, that you're at work, you're at home. Can you imagine at home? How about when a, a, a wife tells my wife and my wife tells me, your good friend... And this would never happen in Uruguay. This would only happen, for example, say in Colombia, where I lived a lot of years. Your good friend so-and-so is just like, he just sits there while his wife cooks dinner, washes the dishes, takes that dog out, does all, cleans up all the things after she's worked all day. And your friend is like, you need to talk to him. It's like, okay, what do you want me to tell him? Well, to get up and help, you know? Who, who's doing all the work? And so to help each other, take out the trash, have you ever thought about that? Whatever the way you've been living your life is the way you think is good and normal. But what if you turned it around and you looked at your life from somebody else's point of view? Do they think the way you're living is good and normal and helpful and that you're actually a real joy to be around and it's great to have you because you help and contribute? Your uniqueness is God's gift to you. But the way that you serve others 
is a way you show your gratitude to God. We sang a song. It's a great song, Nate, and, and that you had there for us. But there was a, there, they had a lot of phrases that come from the Bible. And if you're not familiar with those texts, it could be weird. Like there was a line that said, Barro quiero ser. The song was in Spanish. I want to be like clay in your hands. It's okay. That's kind of a poetic, kind of romantic. In this context of the song, it was from Jeremiah, who said, God is the potter. I am the clay. Like God's in charge. Like I'm dependent on him. He's doing something with my life, and I have to trust him. And the song said, Quiero ser un altar. Para ver. And we don't even talk about an altar in our life, like an altar. But in the biblical image, an altar was a place when something good happened in your life, like Alex. He came up here and told it. So an altar was like you build a pile of stones, and they would make an offering to God, an offering of gratitude or something, and they would put something and say, every time I see this altar... I'm reminded that God was faithful. God did something in my life. I don't ever want to forget that. So what it's saying, the song is saying, I want my life to be the kind of life that somebody looks at it and says, you know what? God did something in that person's life. So maybe there's extra hope for me. De gloria en gloria, transformados por ti. Something like that, the song said. That's another image from Paul writing in the New Testament. He said, you know, one day... Our walk in life can be an experience of learning to serve and love and grow closer to God that is just like changing from glory to glory. Like the hard times come, but we're understanding, we're experiencing a peace and a joy, and that's possible. So that was the concept of that song. Do you know that Jesus said in Matthew 20, 28, and this is repeated in all three of the Gospels, even Jesus Christ He called himself the Son of Man. So if you know the text, he said, even the Son of Man, but he's talking about himself, did not come to be served, but to serve. You know, I found that I I was grown and married, and I would go home to my mom's house, and I would act just like a teenage kid again. I'd sit down in the easy chair, and I'd wait for supper to miraculously appear on the table. Until my mom comes out and she says, you know what? You kids come in here, and it's like I'm running some kind of a cheap hotel. And it's like, you know, you come in, and so help me out. Come in the kitchen. Talk to me. Wash the dishes. And I just was realizing, oh, I thought moms were just, like, automatic. Like, they just produce all these things. And it's like, yeah, you never did the work. And so you need to experience it. Now I'm struggling because Lisa says, John, I'm super busy today. You got, can you be in charge of dinner tonight? I'm like, Sure. And then it's time, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. Who do I call, Peter? And so Peter's got some great numbers for takeout. And so then Galatians 6.10. Galatians 6.10 says, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. You know, I started off, I mentioned I talked to some people. It was, to me, it was a random coincidence that I talked to people this weekend that had been abused by people who were in positions of trust. So I want to flip that around and say, I also talked to some people in the last couple weeks. I asked somebody for their story, and they told me how they had grown up many of their years in an orphanage. And somebody had sponsored them. And because of that sponsorship, they could get an education and move forward. And so in these days, I got a a GoFundMe. It wasn't exactly GoFundMe, but something similar from, maybe some of you saw it, from Tabitha. You remember Pradeep and Tabitha? And Tabitha's dad, who preached in this church, and they were sharing a situation and looking for some funding for a person that needed help. And I was talking to one of these people who had been abused. I did not know this person. I did not know who they were. And it ended up through a contact of a contact. And it turned out they were from Colombia. And in Colombia, I have different kinds of connections because I spent a lot of years. And so we knew some people in common. And it occurred to me, I said, you know, did you ever know Gail Leroy? And you know what the person said? Gail, 
who in one day was the, found, was the director of Compassion International when it started in Colombia. And now they provide for 90,000 children to have sponsorship in Colombia. He said, Gail Leroy provided my education through compassion. And so that's why I'm here today. When I was in Colombia about a year ago, I told you I had lunch with a, there was a group of ladies. Lisa had spoken at a ladies group and they invited me to join them for lunch and just the leaders. There was like five people there. And so I said, well, tell me who you are. Where did you come from? And one gal said, well, I'm, a, I'm studying medicine. I finished my basic degree. I'm looking for the specialization. And I said, well, where did you come from? How did you get here? And she said, well, I'm a compassion child. I said, what do you mean, a compassion child? And she's like, I was one of the kids from a, such a poor neighborhood that someone sponsored through every month, got my education, now I'm a medical doctor. And so that is a thing. Remember I said perspective? In spite of pastors who fail and people who abuse and all these kinds of bad things, I still have the perspective there's a lot of good things. And you and I can make a difference. And when we think and pray, who can we encourage and support? The God, God gives us that perspective. To say, I want to be the person, not that ruins somebody's life, but that builds somebody's life up. You can't fix everybody's problems. But you can make them glad they met you. Serve, smile. And so that's our challenge for this year. That's my challenge for you. How can you grow spiritually? How can you serve? Hopefully here, can be somewhere else. Where can you make a difference? And leave that on there for a minute, Chris. I'm going to uh, ask Kami. Kami, could you come up here for a second? Kami has made a decision because Camila, she has all these, de- I say it like a gringo. That's what she said. It's okay. Kami has made a decision out of all the different options that she could have. Sometimes we have a few options. Sometimes we have a few. Sometimes we have a lot, right? And Camila had the opportunity to go on an internship to where? Why don't you grab I got a microphone. Australia, to Australia. You're going to go to Australia. Yes. And so it's an internship, and what, what will you be doing? Eh, voy a ayudar como voluntaria a, a The Garden, que vendría a ser como La Ruta acá, ya conocen. Eh. So Camila started attending La Ruta. It's a great space for university students and a number of our people have been involved and or people that come here have been involved and here in Positos and they have a place that's like the sister group in Chile where Nacho went and then in Brisbane Australia called the garden and so there's an opportunity for an internship and so right you'll be going as a volunteer voy a ayudar y voy a conocer el equipo allá y como Dios obra en, en Brisbane, en diferentes lugares. ¿Y por cuánto otro? tiempo? Por cinco meses. So you're going to be going for five months, and when do you leave? ¿Cuándo sales? El 19 de ahora de febrero. The 19th of February. Do you remember if you were here in church like three weeks ago, we interviewed Camila, and she didn't have any resources yet destined. She was just like, if God opens the way, And some people are going to um, help support that internship to make it possible and say, I want to help make a difference in Camila's life and in those people's life and be a part of this project. And that was like three weeks ago. Sí. Fue una locura porque en, en tres semanas eh, como que todo se alineó y pudimos comprar el pasaje. Y hace dos días me enteré que no, me aprobaron la visa, así que ya es un hecho. Y to, todos los fondos que precisan eh, ya ahora, están. Ahora eh, falta solo una parte, pero ya o saldamos la parte de, o sea, de la renta, porque allá o sea, tengo, voy a estar en una casa con chicos del equipo y la parte del pasaje ya está, pero falta todavía una parte. Pero ya me habilitaron porque... Ya tengo como lo básico. Qué bien. Yo creo que es una muy buena noticia, porque no es algo que se hizo por esta iglesia, por esta comunidad, sino por recordarnos que... It reminds us, I'm sorry. This is something that reminds us that we're part of a much bigger community. It's something that happened not just here, 
but in a bigger place. In fact, I felt badly that we weren't doing more for Camila. And so a few days ago, last Sunday, I saw Camila and I thought, man, here comes the bad news. Camila's not going to be able to go in February because there was no way to get the support and the encouragement. And so, so I said, Camila, how's it going? I got my tickets. <laughs> ¿Cierto? Sí, sí. Fue todo muy loco porque todavía era como una meta súper grande. Era casi como un sueño poder lograrlo tan rápido. Y bueno, y por suerte con la ayuda de todos eh, se dio. Y voy a poder ir a ayudar. Well, Camila, we're going to be praying for you as you go, and we're very proud of you, and it's a great opportunity, and it's just one, one more step in learning to serve and to grow spiritually. So, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, y muchas gracias por el apoyo. Thanks. Si ustedes desean, if somebody wants to help Camila, there's little cards out there on the table. And it looks like a blood donor. Somebody already thought, oh, are we supposed to donate blood? But no, it's like, it gives a number so you can give a financial gift to support her trip. I am really proud to be a part of this community and of the different, everybody that's here, the different things that happen. There are many things. I hope that as this year starts, you'll look for a way that you can grow spiritually and that you can serve. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, We grow by serving. We grow by giving thanks. We grow by finding out, finding our own voice, becoming more aware of who we are, making sense of our story so that we can share with those around us. I pray that you would encourage each person here, if they're a parent, if they're a son or a daughter, if they're a spouse, if they're single, if they're far from family or close to family, particularly, Lord, to remember Betty and the loss of this dear friend and the family there. What a tragedy. Lord, if we're in the midst of a tragedy, if we're struggling with an addiction, if we need a job, if we have friends that are fighting a battle that's too big, Lord, give us the strength to meet the enemy at the gate to go with a kind word, an encouraging word, even when we don't know, even when we know that we're not enough. Help us to trust in you. Lord, hear our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen.